In our last video, we proved two properties about measures. And in this video, we will continue with other two properties that are a bit hard, but they are also properties of measures. So let's jump ahead to the theorem. The theorem starts very similar to our previous one. We have a measure space. So then this tells us that x is a non-empty set, m is a sigma algebra defined over x, and mu is a measure defined in the sigma algebra m. Okay, so we have this measure space. And then we want to prove properties 3 and 4. Last videos we had 1 and 2, so we continue with the numeration. And this, the first one is called continuity from below, because what we have is a sequence of sets in our sigma algebra that are connected this way. So E1 is the smallest one of all, and they grow when n grows. Okay, so if we make a little drawing, we would have that this, for example, is E1, then E2 contains E1, E3 is even bigger, and so on. They just continue growing more and more. This would be E3 and E4. So we have a sequence in the sigma algebra that satisfies this property. They're growing. Each of the E sub i's, so E sub i, is contained in the following one. So in E sub i plus 1, and so on. Then, so the biggest one of all is when n tends to infinity, right? So n equal to infinity is of infinity, if that even exists, would be the greatest one of all, would be the, the biggest one, the one that contains all the rest. So the union would actually be that bigger and bigger set. So the measure of the union has to be the limit of the measures when j goes to infinity. Before talking about the second property, let's prove number three. Okay, number three, we have a sequence. So the first thing we're going to do is just grab a sequence, E sub j, from j equals one to infinity. As I've said in all the other videos, this sequence is countable. We have countable many elements in our sigma algebra m, and that satisfy that property. E1 contained in E2 contained and so on. So this sequence starts from j equals 1. So let me just define E sub 0, a new element, as the empty set. Okay? I can just define that. This is just any set and obviously E0 is in our sigma algebra. And so we're going to evaluate the measure of the union from j equals 1 to infinity, which is actually what we want for, for the theorem, right? We have to calculate this thing right there. Okay, and what is the measure of the union? As each of these sets is contained in the next one, then we can write this like this. Just let me write it, and then we can think why this happens. It's the measure of the union from j equals 1 to infinity, of not each e sub j, but e sub j minus e sub j minus 1. So when we add, we add the first one, then we add the second one without the first one, but we already added the first one, right? When we get to the second union, we already added the first one, so we're not missing out on anything. When we go to the third one, we get the third minus the second one, but that's fine because we already added the second one. So we actually see that these two things can be equal because we are subtracting elements that we already added, so it's fine. If you don't believe me, then just try and prove that these two things, the union of the e sub j's and the union of the e sub j's minus e sub j minus 1, just prove that those two sets are equals, and that's why I defined these e sub zeros. So I go start this union from one, and then subtract here the empty set, which is, I mean, the first element here would be e sub one minus the empty set, which is just e sub one. 
but now these sets the the new family because this gives us a new sequence the sequence form with e sub j minus e sub j minus one this is disjoint okay then because mu is a measure we can say that this is equal the measure of the union of these joint sets is equal to the sum of the measures of those sets in this case e sub j minus e sub j minus one well what is an infinite sum well it's the same as saying the limit when n tends to infinity of the sum from j equals one up to n because it's an infinite sum this is just a definition of the measure of what we had but now again because these sets are disjoint we can just rewrite this as the limit when n tends to infinity of the measure of the union up to n from j equals 1 of e sub j minus e j minus 1 okay because we just used the same thing we did before this is just the measure the sum of measures of disjoint sets so we can write it as a union but now this is a finite union so the union up to n of elements that satisfy this that each of them is inside the other one when i calculate the union up to n of e sub j minus e sub j minus 1 again we don't care about this e sub j minus 1 but this union up to n it would just give us the last element okay so here we have the measure of the union of this so this is just well the limit when n tends to infinity of the measure of e sub n and that's it we started by saying the measure of the union and we finished with the limit and this is what we wanted to calculate okay now let's prove property number four before but before let's read it and see what it says property number four is continuity from above because now the difference is we have sets that these inclusions are the way around e1 is the biggest of all the sets it's bigger than a than e2 it's bigger than e2 which is bigger than e3 so now what we have is the opposite we have that if this is e1 then here it's e2 here is e3 and so on we have smaller and smaller sets as sentence to infinity so now the intersection would be actually measuring that smaller set and again as the smaller set is when in this case when n tends to infinity then it makes sense for it to be the limit but in this case we have to ask for something particular we have to ask for the measure of e sub 1 so the biggest of all to be finite and it's not very necessary to have this we could just be asking so instead of asking for e1 e1 could be infinity what's important is that at least one of them is finite so the important thing here is having that the measure of some e sub k is finite for for some k okay so there is a point where we get in our sequence that we find a set with finite measure okay let's go ahead and prove this and what we're gonna do is something similar to what we did in our last video now we have a family that satisfies this and so on and we're gonna define another family so we're gonna call them f sub j and it's gonna be e1 so the first element minus e sub j okay so if e1 was the biggest and we have here some e sub 3 for example then f sub j would be 
this pink section this would be f3 because the one we are removing is e3 and when i remove let's say that this one here was e4 f4 would be this green set it would be all this except this tiny little set e4 but it has this section of e3 so we can actually say that f sub j is contained in f sub j plus 1 because e sub 3 is the pink one and the pink one is smaller to the green one to f sub 4 okay the pink one is f3 and the green one is f4 so you believe me in f if i say this for every j and now let's think for a moment because we're, we're just grabbing properties to then calculate the the measure we need and get the result now e sub 1 we can write it as e sub 1 minus some e sub j union e sub j okay we can remove a set and then add it again but this thing we have here this is f j so then this is equal to f sub j union e sub j and this union is disjoint okay because f sub j doesn't have e sub j because of its definition so because it's a disjoint union we have that the measure of e1 the measure of this part here is equal is equal because the measure is disjoint to the measure of f sub j plus the measure of e sub j okay and this is true for all j because the union is disjoint remember that in our last video we saw that the measure of the union was less than or equal to if the union was just anything if, if the sets involved in the union weren't maybe disjoint then the measure was with a less than or equal to but now as these are disjoint this is just because of the definition of a measure we have that the measure of e1 is equal to the sum of these two measures okay and now we can calculate what is the union of the f sub j's i know these things might seem random but you'll see i'm going somewhere the union of the f sub j's is the union and by definition of f sub j of e1 minus ej right and these unions are from j equals 1 to infinity j equals 1 to infinity and this is a well-known property if you don't know about it you can just prove it it's very simple you just have to prove the double inclusion this is e1 minus the intersection of the e sub j's from j equals 1 to infinity and so now that we have this we can just say okay i'm gonna move this to the other side with a union just bring it to the other side and we have cleared e1 so e1 would be this union of s of j's union and this union is going to be disjoint again by definition this intersection so we actually have this here the intersection from j equals 1 to infinity of e sub j okay and now because as before because this is disjoint then we get that the measure of e1 is equal to the measure of the union of the f sub j's plus the measure of the intersections of the e sub j's but now let's see what we have for f sub j f sub j satisfy this property right here so we are calculating the union here of sets 
that are one included in the next one. That rings a bell, doesn't it? Well, it's just continuity from below because we're calculating the, the measure of the union of sets that are growing. That's what we're gonna use them for F. The measure of the Fs is gonna be the limits of their measures. So this first term is going to be equal to the limit when n tends to infinity of the measures of f sub n. And then we have plus this other measure of the intersection. But now, and here we're gonna use this. Now the measure of f sub j is equal to the measure of e sub one just using the definition minus the measure of e sub j because this is what we got in this property right here we just have to clear the measure of f sub j because the measure of e sub 1 is finite from here so let me make a big arrow here we are using this because the measure of e sub 1 our hypothesis told us that this was finite otherwise we wouldn't be able to subtract like this so instead of here writing the measure of the f sub n let me write the measure of e1 minus the measure of e sub n and then we have plus the measure of the intersection. But now here we have the measure of e sub 1 and here as well because this measure is not affected by the limit and we have the limit of minus mu of e sub n. So these two terms, the first one, the yellow one, cancel out and we can move this minus mu of e sub n to the other side and then we get exactly what we wanted to prove because we get this then mu of the intersection is equal to just moving this with the limit to the other side and this is exactly what we were trying to prove now when we started this property i said that it wasn't actually necessary to have the measure of e1 we, I said we could have it for any e sub k and the proof for that would be just saying the exact same thing but starting here with the definition of f for e1 instead of e1 ek minus ej and doing everything like this we would be reaching the same conclusion